Geeta Devi lives in a slum in New Delhi where none of the houses have taps. The groundwater here dried up 20 years ago. Geeta and her family depend on tankers that bring water three times a day. We have to think a lot before we use water. We're always worried. What if we don't manage to get water from the tanker? How will we survive? I'm constantly telling all my family members, be careful and judicious. Like Geeta, the slum's 8,000 residents rely on the water tankers. They say they usually wait in queues for four to five hours because the tankers don't arrive on time. So once a tanker is spotted, there's a rush and fights often break out. Geeta's eight-year-old granddaughter Anushka says the family needs to get its water, whatever the cost. We're constantly thinking of the time that would have been wasted if we return without water. So we're always determined. We fight back if someone is getting in our way. Failure is not an option. This water will last the family half a day. And in the morning, when the next tanker comes, the struggle starts all over again. It's not just the people in this slum who have to cope without any water. Around 600 million Indians live in water-stressed conditions. And the crisis is only going to get worse in the next two years. That's when groundwater in 21 cities, including New Delhi, is expected to run out. The government says up to 70% of India's water supply is contaminated with iron, arsenic and uranium. And the lowest groundwater levels are in its northern states where almost half the population lives. It's also here that the bulk of the country's farming belt lies. Earlier this year, the city of Shimla became the first to face day zero when 200,000 people had no water for almost two weeks. And Bengaluru, once called the city of lakes, is running dangerously low on groundwater. It's expected to become the next city to run dry. Scientists say changing monsoon patterns caused by climate change along with unchecked industrialization and rapid urbanization are to blame. I think the starting point has to be reducing consumption. Uh, we will have to put uh, cost to water and price water adequately so there is incentives uh, and disincentives uh, for, uh, for water. Groundwater recharge and augmentation has to be a priority. Recently, the World Bank approved a $900 million scheme that will help India recharge and maintain adequate groundwater levels. The government is also working on another project that will hold states accountable for tracking and replenishing groundwater. But Geeta knows her lot may not change anytime soon. If the government can do something for us, that will be great. If not, we will continue to struggle like this. What choice do we have? And with day zero possibly only two years away, time for Geeta and millions of others is quickly running out. Neha Punia, TRT World, New Delhi.